Hi, I've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday, July 23rd, and over here in the Atlantic, if you look around, it might look at first glance like there's nothing to see out here, and there isn't, except if we go all the way over towards Africa here, you find a system passing just south of the Cape Verde Islands. This is Invest 98L. This is the tropical wave we were talking about in the last couple of posts. Uh, and videos that was coming off of Africa and now has done so and this is going to be worth watching and uh, this is kind of already uh, very close to a tropical depression if we look at the ace cap pass from this morning we saw closed circulation winds are not that impressive but it's very well defined and visible satellite imagery confirmed that today as well the only real issue right now is that the thunderstorms with it are not really that strong and the NHC will likely want to see these persist with at least some strength near the center of circulation before upgrading it but I think this is eventually going to get a designation probably later tonight or tomorrow um, it's hard to imagine it won't given how well defined of a system it is this is really not a wave this is a well defined area of low pressure uh, that is pretty much a tropical depression now and we'll be coming west-northwest to westward across the eastern and into the central Atlantic. And uh, the interesting thing for this system is that it's going to be struggling right off the bat. Uh, it's not going to be able to strengthen very well uh, very soon because it's moving over much cooler water now. This is the sea surface temperature map and it came off of Africa over very warm waters of 28 Celsius in the red colors here but it's now moving south of the Cape Verde Islands and the waters quickly get much cooler here. The yellow color in here is between 24 and 25 degrees Celsius. Now the threshold for tropical development is usually about 26 degrees Celsius which is a line right here. So this is actually pretty cold water and the system is going to be struggling uh, immensely because of it. There is dry air in front of it but that is not the root problem. It really has a nice moisture bubble coming off with it here and 98L does. So the dry air is not going to be the root problem. It's going to be the sheer uh, lack of heat in the ocean that it's transversing here is going to keep it down and then uh, past 50 west uh, waters get warm and this is when it could try to come back but it has to survive this for about three to four days and uh, even more than this the pattern is going to be a little bit suppressive and I'll show that here this is the GFS uh, this is at uh, initialization here and I'm actually going to zoom this out a bit so that we can see up to the north as well. This is the initialization. Here's our system at 700 millibars. You can see the African easterly jet is starting to protrude out into the eastern Atlantic. This is helping to generate vorticity. It's also helping to start push it off towards the west-northwest. And this is now when the system is going to start gaining a little bit of latitude here and get into that colder water. You can see there's a weakness in front of it here, another wave that's going to help allow this to make progress towards the southern edge of this ridge, which right now at the moment is way off to the north here. So it has room to gain latitude. But if we go out to um, day two here, notice that as this trough digs in the eastern seaboard and this trough is stuck west of Europe here, this ridge strengthens like a monster and this actually becomes an, a nearly record-breaking strong ridge in the central Atlantic for this time of year with over 600 decameter heights at 500 millibar. Very strong ridge and uh, you can see the system uh, no longer has that much room to come farther north. Now if the ridge were to just sit here uh, big H right here. Uh, storms like this will tend to just continue gaining latitude and go right on around the edge of the ridge. They'll just come up and recurve and that's what a lot of models had. Some still do. I'll show that in a minute. Uh, this system doing is just curving north of the Antilles Islands and curving on out to sea. But watch what happens if we go to hour 96. This trough right here, which was back here, um, dives into Greenland and in the positive a a NAO pattern that we have right now these Icelandic vortices in this area tend to stay strong and when it does this it flattens out the top of the ridge and starts forcing it to the southwest so what we now have is a strong ridge starting to follow our system off to the south and that's going to prevent it from coming around the western flank of the ridge because the ridge is essentially following it and is now due north of the position of our low level feature. So that's going to keep it on a more westerly track now and that's something the models have just recently realized and the reason this happened is because originally uh, this system was coming off into the Central Atlantic a lot faster, uh, but yesterday it took its sweet time coming westward, and it has today too, only just now starting to accelerate to the west-northwest. And uh, because of that delay relative to the model forecast, the models are having to correct now because this high is now going to have the time to get out to the north of this system and keep it on a more westerly track, and this will likely end up much closer to the Lesser Antilles uh, than it looked like a couple of days ago. And so you can see that happening on the GFS, and it ends up bringing it towards Puerto Rico and Hispaniola later on this particular run. 
And so you can see all of the models now showing this getting uh, pretty far, uh, pretty far west at a fairly southerly latitude here, all except for uh, the European, which is still stubbornly way up here with it, uh, southeast of Bermuda in five days, and actually the UK Met is as well, showing this feature here well north of Puerto Rico in six days. So both of the European models, which are our highest skilled models, they are the best at tropical forecasting in general, are still sticking to the northerly solutions. However, the European has been consistently too far, th far north and too fast with this system from the beginning. So I have doubts um, going with its forecast for 98L at this point. The GFS has been the quickest to adapt, and especially the higher resolution experimental versions of the GFS have been better at adapting to the southerly path that is now being forecasted by many of the statistical models and uh, hurricane dynamical guidance here as you can see much closer to the islands than the European models up here. Uh, so for now I'm going to be leaning with this group of models farther south especially because of a weaker system being trapped underneath of a very strong ridge I think uh, should bring it on a path like this and that's what I have for my forecast track here. You can see it gaining some latitude and then speeds up a little bit. This is not going to be moving as fast as Chantal, so I don't think fast trade wind flow will necessarily kill it the way it did Chantal, but it's going to be cool water and uh, the resulting weakness that it has. It's a very small, very fragile system. The big story here is going to be its struggle for survival. It's very hard to imagine this storm ever becoming a hurricane, uh, but if it can survive here, and I do forecast it at least maintaining some sort of a presence, being able to survive and get in here where it may start to strengthen a little bit here. You can see me upping the winds a bit as it uh, nears uh, the northern Caribbean islands and they may see it in this vicinity um, nothing to worry about in the imminent future right now this is at five days and uh, five to six days is when it will be nearing these islands and it could still pass north of them uh, like the European model show that's certainly not set in stone yet and uh, it could even be completely dead by this time we could not have a tropical storm here at all and just have a weak open wave that really doesn't have thunderstorms with it and this isn't going to have a lot of thunderstorms on its way out here it's not going to look impressive you don't have a major hurricane developing and coming your way. This is a small, tiny system that is going to be struggling to live and uh, may or may not be a tropical storm as it nears uh, the northern Caribbean in a, about a week. So something to watch, uh, but not really a huge deal right now, uh, but could become Dorian eventually, so we'll keep an eye on this system. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.